I like to think about it a little bit ahead of time. Um, feel free to drop like any abstract cool stuff that you see on Instagram or, or Behance. <laughs> you put it in the Discord. And of course, you just do exclamation mark Discord. Um, you'll get an invitation for it. Um, so yeah, if you see anything that's like pretty cool on, on Behance or Instagram or Vimeo, TikTok, <laughs> Visco, if you see it anywhere, uh, we could try to put it in or whatever. Um, so yeah, I also have this um, hip file. I started doing direct links here. Um, the direct links are pretty nice. You can actually just put them. Oof, not like that. Maybe it will work. Let's see if it works. <laughs> Do you, if it's a direct link, the YouTube did some nonsense to it, but... With Houdini, you can open up straight URLs. It looks like that link got a little bit garbled. Um, I don't know if it's going to work. Let me just go into the editor. Player 2! Thank you for the 11 months! Let's go! So yeah, if you do um, the full link like this... it will open up directly in Houdini. So it's a convenient way of just like quickly uh, retrieving a file. Deeds, thank you for the Twitch Prime. So yeah, we'll close this. And yeah, I just wanted to start with, with this file pretty quickly. Um, Someone was going to hammer with the uh, rasterization. I just wanted to talk about that pretty quickly. Yeah, here it is. Umer. <laughs> These were amazing. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure if, if you did it, but there is the possibility to do a um, rasterization of the volume, and that's m even closer to like the Krakatoa effect. And um, it will also allow you to use like Redshift. If you have too many particles to fit on your GPU, you can rasterize them or convert them into a volume. <laughs> I am up early. Yes, it's <laughs> just 8 a.m. The sun is, is, is uh, barely up right now. Ooh, it's pretty nice. Yeah, this is a pretty cool combination of like, you do some, some interesting stuff with height fields. I like the, the stop motion um, effects and everything of it as well. 1am. <laughs> you must be... Uh, I don't know. Japan? I feel like it's, it's not that late in... Oh, Australia. Yeah, that, that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Umer's uh, renders. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to quickly just talk about uh, volume rasterization at the end here. So we have 114 million <laughs> particles, and this might be uh, too much to, to fit on your GPU. Too many, uh, too much memory. Too too much uh, particles. So if you want to make it more efficient, um, you can rasterize them, or this is like, um, rasterization is like, if you ever use Photoshop, you're basically going from vector to uh, grid-based or image-based, like a, a JPEG. Um, so if you ever have like Bezier curves, those are vectors. And then if you rasterize them, you are converting them from like a vector, like coordinate scheme to 
grid based like a fixed to a grid so the same same thing applies with uh 3d things so like each particle here has a 3d coordinate xyz position but we can put them to a grid you do um volume rasterize particles um this is a very efficient quick way to do it so like here one thing i was doing was cropping um the particles to fit within the camera press them but you could even kind of bypass that and, and probably create a few more um one thing you want to be careful about is this particle scale so you don't want to be rasterizing like each particle is a really big sphere so usually I'll, I'll put this around like my voxel size so i'm just gonna start and make a guess here at like 0 0.005 and we'll do this the same i'll call this density this is just like houdini's default uh name for a volume You can see this cooks pretty quickly. Um, sometimes the display here of this is like a little bit garbled. One thing that can happen is if you press the D key over the viewport, you go to the texture tab. You can see my 3D textures, which is a volume. This is limited, uh, the resolution. So if you uncheck this, and then sometimes just to refresh the viewport, you can just bypass and unbypass. Any reason you like rasterized particles versus rasterized attributes? Um, I th so you can see the full <laughs> high quality now. It takes a little bit longer to, to load, but for sure um, you can see all of the detail in this. So I think rasterized particles, um, I might've, uh-oh, <laughs> might've, uh, broken my viewport here let me give it a second so i think rasterize attributes is built around the rasterize particles maybe you need to be careful about too much uh too many <laughs> voxels um like an on off voxel a point is in a voxel or average of the points in the voxel space it's not as simple as an on off there's a little bit of um smoothing that happens on the edges but it that's one way you could think of it is like basically each voxel here depending how bright it is is saying like how many particles are contained within it um but again it's not like a binary or it's not an integer so you can do smoothing and things like that um but yeah that's that's okay i might have actually this might have, might have hard locked my session <laughs> all right so i'm just gonna do a hard reboot over here oh it came back oh man all right that's okay so i'm gonna go back into limit and just turn that off for a second. Um, another thing you can do if you're interested in like inspecting things is this volume slice. This is always really handy. So this will give you a grid based kind of uh, representation of uh, to inspect the values. So each of these is like a little voxel. Um, if we template this, this is basically just showing you like where where the dense regions of particles are um and then this this value will go higher so yeah you can get an idea of things that way greyhound we're doing another cool zone i'm doing a little bit of a review from uh last week's but it's going to be a similar a little bit of a similar um, vibe today. So yeah, and then rasterize attributes. 
Um, so yeah, I think inside this is similar stuff happening. Um, depending on your situation, like these are doing the same thing. Um, I, I just prefer to manage it this way, I guess. Um, I, I don't know, sometimes I do a little bit more like under the hood stuff or whatever. Uh, the other reason is like, one thing that always, it's like a pet peeve of mine or whatever. Um, we copy these values. So these should be doing the eggs. Maybe this was why I was doing it, because it's. I think it looks for like an attribute by default. You know what I mean? Like you have to make a density. So I th that was, I think, one of the bigger reasons why, because you don't even need an attribute if you work this way. Um, so yeah, the other thing I don't, I, like I'll try not to really use too many of these HDAs if I can, especially here when I middle mouse button, you can see that this last cook time is accurate. Any, it's like a Houdini legacy issue or whatever, like this cook time, they can't accumulate all of the node cooks within it. So you actually have to like double click and go inside and like click around to see cook times. Uh, so that, yeah, that's uh, just like a small grievance of mine or whatever, but, but yeah, that's another reason I, but yeah, whatever you want is it's up to you. Um, so yeah, if you, if you rasterize them, we'll go into the camera and now like you could, um, render this with redshift. Um, this step here of rasterization makes things a little bit faster to render. So if I just go and do, just click the screwdriver wrench and go to volume. And I think just basic smoke. Oof, <laughs> it's not, not basic. Cloud. Yeah. Um, so we'll just grab the cloud and assign it there. And then if I go into my, my render view, basically, if you rasterize stuff ahead of time, the, the renderer has to do less um, ray tracing, less like shadow calculations. So it's a lot faster to render. We'll just turn the density down a little bit. Cover these kinds of effects. Ooh. Yeah, I saw someone on, on YouTube a while back was was uh, asking about something similar to this. It was like, uh, it was from a Netflix show, I think. Who is this? This looks kind of like Brad Pitt. I don't know who it is. Vegan nuts. <laughs> so yeah, if you're doing um, velocity, it's it's definitely a little bit easier, I think. Um, like the way that the fluid source stuff sets everything up, it's it's pretty nice with all that. All right. So. I'm not getting as much shadow information as I wanted. Let's see what's going on here. I think that this... Turn that up a little bit. Where are these lights? Just gonna get rid of that for a second. Okay. So yeah, we're rasterizing this if I switch it even out of um, the preview mode. I'm rendering like this is 4K or whatever, but... Let me go into a lower resolution. 
so you can see this is a 2k image and this just happens super quickly with the the uh rendering and basically that's because we're, we're rasterizing or flattening everything down into a volume ahead of time um so that's really cool the other thing i did a stream a while ago about this like hacking the volume shader to get nice um, effects. But basically, if you take this density scale, you multiply it um, and you convert it. Instead of it a float, you make it into a vector. So we can do constant. And uh, we'll make this a color. And then do that. And then if you click here and you do shift R to swap or reverse the inputs, um, this will cast the data type to a vector. So you can see the color of the wire changed. And if I hover over it instead of float, it now says vector. Um, so this is, if you ever use Arnold, they have like um, scattering uh, color attenuation and that kind of stuff. That's basically what we can simulate now with this, um, now that it is a, a volume. So this is more similar to like Krakatoa and, and all of that stuff that you can do. This is the mantra <laughs> shading hack world. Um, Mr. Wazoo. <laughs> so yeah, this is one way to do it. Another thing you can do is, um, at the end here with the opacity, the OF. Um, you can tint this as well. These behave differently. Um, one of them is more like absorption and one of them is more like an actual tint. So like, if I just do this as straight yellow, I'm gonna set this back to, to white to kind of bypass it. <laughs> So this, I think it happens, it's like 180 degrees, where it's the opposite of the, the color wheel here. Um, you can convert it if you want, but um, it's up, up to you how you want to manage it. So let's just, just get into this light, and make things look a little bit better. I think I just need a lot more density. So I'm just looking at the alpha channel here to see like where my uh, density kind of like clips out or whatever. Need to know how to use PBR shaders. Adding or mixing reflection. Um. I mean, it's hard to add reflections with a volumetric shader, but in general with, with PBR, um, you can just composite them together like you traditionally do. So this being F, if you have like a specular, um, is this PBR? You can just add the, the um, BRDFs, the BSDFs together and do that kind of stuff. Um, you can also, like, if you work with these layers, that will kind of handle all of it as well with you. All right. So one thing that happens when you do convert this to a volume, you might lose detail. So if you click and go to um, volume step rate, you might have to set this higher. If you have like high frequency, um, very like detail, a lot of like fine detail within your volume to, to catch that detail, you might need to, to increase that volume step rate. All right. We're getting something. Do some toxic. <laughs> toxic sludge here today <laughs> yeah my backlight is a little bit uh 
this is kind of closer now to where I was with the where I ended up with the the previous week um <clears throat> so yeah that's pretty cool I'm so do reduce the shadow density to just let kind of light bleed in a little bit more that's can be cool sometimes Ooh, the nice amber kind of crisp So yeah, this generally gets you a little bit closer to um, Asus is on. Yes, I uh, mentioned quickly at the start of the stream, but but yeah, I've uh, adopted Asus for the time being. I'm gonna give it a, a quick try for a little bit. Blowing out so much, I think. I mean, it's definitely not as bad as as it is without it. Right? This is pretty bad. Um, like it definitely, you see, I don't know, maybe my, uh, on the stream, it's like compressing some stuff. But it's a, it definitely rolls off a lot better and like oversaturated um, yellows and all that stuff, I think is, I don't know if, uh, it's like always banana. <laughs> It's always so frustrating to me. It's just, I never like this yellow. So with this, it's just definitely a little bit more cinematic, I think, like, by default. You can always tone map it in, in Nuke and do some stuff like that as well. Um, but yeah, I think my light, like, is super strong as well. So I'm just <laughs> blowing it out myself. Let's go, maybe... Look at that. Can you use like Rec 709 instead of sRGB? Uh, yeah, I mean, you could use, you can load your own LUT. You can use a, a ton of different stuff. Um, it's, it's up to you, but I, I tend just to stick to sRGB. I mean, I even managing too much of this stuff myself is like, just gets into treacherous territory pretty quickly but um start to to see a little bit better um detail i guess now that we're not blowing everything out um my particles might be a little bit too small i might have cranked this stuff up a little bit too much it's like once this gets a little too crunchy like that you might be rasterizing your particles too small and then as you make things bigger like i did there you can see the density quickly changed like you do have to manage you can just do coverage scale um basically as you make particles bigger the amount of density that they produce will also uh, get a lot bigger as well so yeah for nebulas um this kind of like Krakatoa look, like um, all that stuff for sure, rasterizing things as, as volumes. And you can see how quick it renders. It's it's really nice. Um, the particle count, so I'm, I'm rasterizing these to voxels. Right now, this is a pretty low resolution volume. Um, it's probably like 300 by 300 by 300. But my particle count is over a hundred million. So, like I was saying, this this is kind of an optimization. Um, and instead of rendering particles directly, you always have this option. Um, even if you're sometimes if you're rendering stuff in other software packages or, or giving something to a compositor like a lighter to to pick up, if you give them a VDB, um, they'll be a lot more comfortable working with it than writing out like billions of particles or whatever. Um, but yeah, you could probably see if I 
push this point separation um, even lower to produce a lot more particles, it should still um, work out okay. Imagine opening a <laughs> hundred million. Yeah, they wouldn't be happy with you. <laughs> Giving me the save warning. <laughs> I, I almost already had a hard reboot. <laughs> I'm, I'm pushing things to the limit already. So yeah, I'll save this in a second. I can distribute the file to, to you guys as well. I have an eye on my memory here. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not using too much RAM, which is... I think pretty safe. So as well as you increase particle count, 250 million, um, you need to keep it as well managing the density. Um, so I went to like around twice as many particles. So if you have the density, basically that will compensate. And you can see now the uh, thickness didn't, the opacity didn't change too much. And basically as you make more and more particles, um, you'll start to like resolve this like fine detail. Um, you could also increase pixel samples like that can start to resolve stuff a little bit as well. All right, let's save this. Save this bad boy. I'm just going to put it in the same folder as I was working out of uh, last time. And then we'll just say rasterize. I'll just leave it as version 5. So yeah, if you be careful if you open this file um you might open it in manual mode or something like that but if you want to check check out the volume um shader I, I put together um just be sure to double click on that and then you can see these like color moves that i did inside of there um so yeah we'll just just do a couple more tweaks and then we'll get started on the main the new idea or whatever today. Um, so I'm going to go reduce the voxel size in the particle scale. So as you reduce particle scale, you'll kind of like sharpen the detail. Things will get less blurry. But if you do it too much, it can look a little bit, um, I don't know. It just looks a little bit like too wispy, I guess. Let's just move this stuff around a little bit. All right. Pyro shader core. Yeah, the Pyro, do they have all these options on it? I feel like at some point they had some of it in, but... Um... At some point they had some attenuation stuff, but I think this is... These two are kind of somewhat interchangeable. Um, but yeah, this is mostly hard-coded. Um, in in vex but uh but i like I, I don't know i i i enjoy working um in shaders that you can like get get a little filthy <laughs> but yeah I, I never figured out how to do this these color um absorption stuff with the pyro shader i feel like an older version of pyro they had it in but they took it out or something like that. Maybe it was a classic. I don't know. This stuff is too gets too too complicated for me. 
<laughs> but yeah, so basically what I'm doing is pre-multiplying the density scale by a color and then pre-multiplying the, or, or just post, I guess, post-multiplying the opacity um, by a color as well. Um, so yeah, you can get pretty nice, like I was saying, uh, kind of Krakatoa. Um, very, none of this is like physically based because we're, we're rendering stuff using like RGB light instead of like spectral um, colors. But just for abstract visuals and things like that, you can get some really interesting um, effects playing around with these colors. The more saturated you get, like the more cartoony it will kind of look. If you just do this stuff really subtly, you can still get some really nice, like refined looking, um, like very elegant looking colors. And then the default, one of like the famous Krakatoa looks, I think, is if you get in this blue, bluish region, you get a um, this really nice looking like blue to brown roll off. Um, it takes a little bit of time to find. I feel like this for a while was like a pretty classic um, Krakatoa look going from this like smoky blue to a very, uh, it's like a very gaseous kind of looking thing. Yeah, they had an attenuation on there like a couple versions of Houdini ago or something. <laughs> I think they, they lost it somehow, but I, yeah, I've always just had to revert back to, to jumping in here and adding this stuff um, anytime I wanted the like kind of Krakatoa looking uh, effects. The gas particle to field. It depends what I'm doing. Um, if I go into DOPS and do the actual like low level smoke solver, I do it for sure. But if you do um, the simple simple solvers and that kind of stuff, um, you can avoid gas particle to field and like the nano VDB stuff will work with the um, things that Steve GH was mentioning earlier, the uh, volume rasterize attributes. Um, it depends on, on the workflow, but the, the gas particle to field is still pretty valuable um, to use for sure. All right, so we just want to clean up these shadows. Um, you have a few options if you increase like these stochastic um, samples. We'll slow things down a little bit, but you'll start to resolve some of this um, flickeriness or whatever. You see things look a little bit cleaner. Yeah, Umer, you should try it with your um, compositions with that uh, that face. Be really cool with that. I was I thought I saw a little bit of it. Like you're doing something fancy in the in the shader for sure. Um, but yeah, this is, can get really nice colors. Um, that's an idea. Sometimes this volume step rate, I might be a little bit too high. Um, so yeah, the main things to play around, I would say is like pixel samples, volume step, and then stochastic samples. Tech Adventures, thanks. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. It's machine learning land. <laughs> that will fry your brain very quickly for sure. Glowing magma. Some people have done this, I think, with with um flip. This is what I'm thinking of. Yeah, if you do a flip simulation, they have some, maybe even some shelf tools and stuff, but um, for sure I'd, I'd look into to a flip simulation. They have uh, UV attributes and and um, if you're really 
interested in like this um stringy like flowed uh, and cooled lava for sure it will it will um give you that kind of effect all right so you get the idea here with it um if you really want you can push the particle count even higher um so yeah this is basically the trick that krakatoa does kind of behind the scenes for you as well um and this is how people in 3ds max would would uh render like billions of particles um krakatoa was also doing something that was like uh similar to like clustering or wedging in houdini where you can save out slightly different um if you were to change this jitter seed and then write out like eight different uh wedges or, or vdbs you could render them together and um you would effectively be like rendering more than a billion particles so that's pretty cool for sure Premolt you render this is um, this button over here. You think? Yeah. You can mix CD. Uh, yeah, you can do whatever you want with it. Like, if you had a color attribute, you could um, use it for sure. Um, your volumes would get a little bit heavier. You could do um, like a procedural noise and, and mix colors around at render time, um, which is pretty cool as well. This stuff wouldn't necessarily stick to the um, particles. But if you just wanted to do like a simple object space noise um, and then use this as the, the color, you can get some interesting, very nebula. <laughs> if you ever making an outer space scene, for sure this, this stuff is, is pretty cool to play around with. Yeah, yeah, if you have color assigned to your attributes um, and rasterize that this would pick it up automatically with the the cd as long as you you name the the volume uh cd um but yeah sometimes i'll do these um procedural noises especially if you're doing a, a nebula scene or something like that let's just make these trying to make them super different colors just to like visualize the um might be sometimes if you go around like too saturated like this it it um one color will override the other color uh, i think i also know what's happening here um the, i think usually this noise, the output of it goes negative. Um, so if you just do a fit range, you probably want to go like negative 0 0.1 to 0 0.1. Okay, now we're getting a little bit of the, the other colors for sure. So yeah, then you start to get even more detail because the colors like contrast each other and, and all that kind of stuff. Ooh boy. <laughs> yeah, I've I've tried to make some of these uh really detailed NASA nebulas and stuff before. It's it gets very uh just the amount of detail you need is is very tricky. But yeah, if you if you're interested in making this kind of stuff, for sure the rasterized particles is, is a great way to go. 
yeah, those <laughs> those uh, lens flares, <laughs> super super crunched. Um, let's just try even less density. It kind of depends on the look you want. Like, you can do stuff maybe super wispy if you really want a ton of of uh, detail and things. Usually, I prefer to make stuff look as billowy as I can. So what I end up doing is cranking the density up quite high and then reducing this shadow density multiplier. You can go really low with it. Um, and then you start to get more of like a... like a thicker cloud, I guess. They're like wispy, wispy versus billowy. Um, the two ends of the, the spectrum or whatever. Where was my... <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, that, that's gonna be enough for this... This, uh... File. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly talk about, um... Rasterization with particles and things like that. So I had a, a new idea, or a di slightly different idea, today. Um... It's similar uh, in a similar vein as what we were doing here, but I'm gonna try. Um, I wanted to try something with like curves or maybe even hair and fur instead of where we were previously. Um, we again do this volumetric stuff, maybe. Brazil is Valentine Valentine's Day. Any tips on how to court a girl? I don't know. <laughs> we just buy them uh, some Brazilian, make her a nice nebula. Yeah, this is almost like a flower. These are Valentine's Day uh, nebulas. <laughs> All right. Whoops. So, yeah, pre like we were doing previously with um, the the particles, we're doing a curl noise inside of a attribute vop to push things around. Um, here, I'm just going to try directly putting a, a noise inside of a volume vop to to make a, a density function. Ooh. These are really cool particles. These are like the, um... Maxime. Almost like the Maxime look on a, a little bit, right? Can't zoom in that much. But, um... Yeah, it seems like these have a little bit... They, Definitely not rasterized, like each one has a little bit of maybe a specular to it or something like that. Alright. So let's... Right now, uh, the default... We just have 10 sampling divisions. Um... This is a bit low resolution. You could probably do 128. That's like a, a quick starting point. Um, again, this AA noise or anti alias noise will give you negative numbers. Um, if you're doing voxels, like to visualize them, usually you don't want negative numbers in, in your grid. So we'll just do that. You planning to stream as before? Um, like the schedule? I'm I'm still pretty busy with work, so I'm I'm like, unfortunately, just just doing these as I can. But um, hoping. I mean, I'm I'm booked still for a few more months and everything. We'll see how the schedule goes, but 
for right now, yeah, I'm just trying to uh, get these going as 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 uh, as I have free time. So this is pretty cool. Um, if I change the frequency of these noises, usually I'll, I'll do it ahead of time like this. Um, just a personal preference, just because you can quickly see like this is a frequency of four. But you can also multiply them in here if you prefer. Um, you can do like stretch things along an axis um, as well, which can be pretty cool if you do it like that. And my uh, one of the ideas I had was to do like a kind of Rorschach looking thing. Let me get a new window here. Rorschach. <laughs> Didn't go. Okay. So yeah, with these... Very interesting symmetry. Um, so yeah, with noise, like by default, it's very chaotic. Um... If you just do an absolute value of a um, coordinate, then you can kind of mirror things. So we'll do that. Let's take the X, Y, Z. If we want to mirror things in Z, so I'm looking down the X direction right now. So if we want to mirror things in Z, we can just do an absolute value of Z. And then we just need to go um, back from a float to a vector. Ooh, yeah, they were doing some some very some similar kind of mirroring and things like that. I don't know if they were doing this in post. With simulations, you can tell sometimes because there's like in the pressure solve, there's irregularities. So it depends on what you're doing, but you could mirror it in After Effects or in Post or whatever as well. All right. Oops. We'll just connect these. There it is. So yeah, you can mirror things that way. This is like the low level <laughs> mathematical way to do it. Um, I talk a little bit more about this absolute value in YouTube. I had the pure vex um, series. I talk a little bit about the absolute value and how it, it's kind of like folding, taking a paper and like folding it or uh, reflecting um, things across the origin. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. If we want to keep things within a certain distance um you do like this length function you can kind of like window a noise function this way so you can see i'm making a little mask here um, and you can pre-molt your noise by the mask to get like a little region. Um, if you want this to be more interesting than just like a sphere, before you do the length, you can add a, a three-dimensional noise to your point position or your, or your voxel position. So this will do like a domain distortion. Ooh. <laughs> so we have a little shape now. Um, usually I like to keep an eye on how big my uh, region is. Just so I'm not like I'm, 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 I'm like using space optimally. Um, like I don't want to waste all of this extra voxels. So we could increase the region here from like 1.5. 
pretty cool. I'm I'm just gonna get rid of this. Uh, let's leave it in. So you could poke poke holes and stuff or whatever. Um, yeah. So we're doing things like that. It's pretty cool. If you want to evolve these over time, of course, you can switch from a vector three to a vector four like this. And then if we just connect this to the global time, this is the camel <laughs> sunglasses. You can see things evolve over time a little bit. Um, and then we probably want to evolve the other noise function as well. So it doesn't look as, um, looks odd if you just evolve one, like it's, um, the things aren't as connected or whatever. You don't like things at the, <laughs> you never like these. I, I don't really like these noises happening at the origin either. <laughs> I noticed in some tutorial, instructor used to uncheck auto bind. Can you please describe if possible? Um, yeah, I, it depends what you're doing under volume bindings. Auto bind by name. Um, it doesn't really apply here, but it's if you have other grids. Um, so let's instead of density. Let's just call this like um, cloud. You would call it whatever you want. So when I change the name of this grid to cloud, um, auto bind by name here is basically saying each grid just use the name that I've assigned. So now inside of here, I'm still trying to write to density, but my my grid or my volume is named uh, cloud. So you have a few options. You can do bind like this. I'm sorry, bind export. And then if I call this cloud, then I'm, I'm writing to the cloud um, grid or the, or the volume. That's one option. I, as some people also, instead of auto bind by name, you bind each to density. What that basically means is every scalar volume or every volume that goes in here, it will treat it as as density, or it will just audit, like you don't have to manage names. This is basically instead of density, you can think of it as just like the output value. Um, so it just depends on what you're working on, or if you're in like a hurry or whatever, like. I'll do this if I'm just hacking stuff together very quickly and I don't have time to, I, I can't be bothered doing that kind of stuff. But you can work that way. You can also do, this is super technical, but like if you want to say specifically um, the cloud, treat it as density, you can overwrite or like you're kind of rewiring things that way, if, if that makes sense. But <laughs> I generally, if I'm making a scalar volume, I just call it density. Um, everything in Houdini is set up to kind of looking for that um, name. So unless I'm doing something specific like an alpha channel or, or something else, that's I, well, I usually just use density. All right. We'll put this in a new directory. Six, twelve. I don't know how to spell anything. <laughs> this I need to get this Rorschach. Um. shape version one all right just so yeah if you guys want to grab that you can get an idea of what's going on inside of here um depending on how detailed you want these shapes to be 
sometimes I'll like reduce the octaves. So that will give you a cleaner, crisper kind of shape. That's pretty cool. And then of course, with these other offsets, you have infinite possibilities. You can just try random numbers, see things um, update quickly. You can do a top network and produce um, the this kind of thing. That would be fun. Just a, a poster, <laughs> print out a thousands different. <laughs> yeah, you can wedge parameters. Um, you can play around with this amplitude as well. Like the more you push this, this is distortion. And then this one is like the mask. So this one's doing the outline shape. And then this one we're punching holes um, in, in, in our mask with this one. So the, the more you push the amplitude of this distortion, if you do it too much, it kind of gets garbled or whatever, but that will kind of spread things out pretty, pretty um, interestingly. You see, I've, I've kind of pushed it too far here. It's breaking things a little bit too much. All right. So yeah, we're starting to get some cool things. You can as well promote this stuff if you want. Just click on the gear and do promote parameter. Um, so if I was to give this file to someone else, like I would probably take the time to name these better, but this will just let you go up to the higher level and like adjust parameters without it kind of simplifies things like you're telling people basically these are the the important parameters or like this is what i want you to play around with um so d depending how much time you're taking or whatever that that can be cool all right so yeah we're just visualizing stuff as the density but if you want to you can do um convert VDB. Um, so if we convert from a volume to a VDB, now this is like a sparse data format. Um, so if I do the visualize the tree, you can see these are what's called the leaf nodes. But if you just look at active voxels here, you can even do boxes if you want. Um, basically, we're creating an empty canvas here. That's this whole box that we can write to. But then if you were to export this or, or you want to render with like Redshift or another renderer, you can convert it to VDB this way. Um, so it's a, a few different steps, but at the end you want to convert. If you do this ahead of time, um, depending on your values and stuff like if i don't activate this you can see i don't have any voxels to write to because like this deactivates everything essentially so that's the reason to do this at the end it's like you've decided which which areas of the volume you want to operate on so now you can convert it to, to the sparse format and then the other reason to do convert to vdb you can do a, a double. <laughs> Just keep stacking these up. Um, so from here, we're going dense to sparse. And then with this one, we can go from fog to SDF. So the SDF, the signed distance field, this is a really fog to SDF. Um, this is a way of surfacing your, your uh, result. Um, so instead of like smoke or opacity, now basically anything that has a value above this um, slider, that will be treated like a hard surface. 
really <laughs> poggers yeah it's pretty pretty poggers for sure um and then the last step if you want to do one more convert vdb <laughs> so I, there's reasons to do many of these but the last one is if you want to go to polygons um so now we, we actually have a mesh like a hard surface thing that we can assign like a glass shade or two or, or whatever anything like that that's that's really cool um so here we'll just say sdf to mesh yes is <laughs> you can make a little pelvis skeleton uh, yeah the rorschach the the sim symmetry oops what did i do okay the symmetry stuff i feel like you make a lot of things that look like vertebrae or or lungs or <laughs> faces like it kind of like i was saying with with noise um without this things just look a little bit too chaotic or uninteresting there's like a little bit of a design trick or whatever just add some symmetry or add some um order some repetition to things to, to make it look interesting this one could be like an antler like a deer skull or something like that it's pretty cool And you can modify things. Um, like if you if you find something that's close close enough to what you want, if you know enough about how these values work, like I can increase these numbers to kind of expand things outwards. Oof, but too much and it like inverts itself. So that's pretty cool. Even ZBrush would be jealous. Yeah, I think there's a lot of... Uh, you're, you could even make um, procedural character generators or like really, really cool things with this. Um, let's play around with this stuff a little bit more. So yeah, you can see you get like stylized, just disable the octaves, like one one iteration of noise. Or if you want more detail, you can add more roughness, more octaves, and all that kind of stuff. Did you build a mirror? Yeah, so I was doing the absolute value. Um, you can think of the absolute value function as like a mirror it will reflect or repeat one side to the other. Um, you could even do a couple. Uh, it gets a little too much. <laughs> You're mirroring too many dimensions, but for sure, yeah, you just uh, play around with the, the absolute value on a dimension. Um, you can do it as well, like here. But it's if you do it all in the noise function, like the blends and everything will happen. You don't have to worry about like fusing meshes or, or playing around with that stuff. But yeah, the, the absolute value we're basically doing a mirror stop. All right. Let me just play around with this a little bit more. It got a little bit too big. I'm just going to make it. Okay. That's a little bit cleaner. And then because I've um, adjusted this over time, we were playing around with that. Um, if I just do a time shift node at the bottom here and delete the channels, you can do... Um, old specific frame like a freeze frame or whatever um th these are cool cool to work this way like this you can kind of make specific copies or things that way so if you have a few numbers that you like or a few random um 
generations that you like. This is a cool way to kind of like bookmark them or whatever. This one's a very ominous looking uh, skull or something here with a, a little nose. <laughs> So yeah, this is a cool way to store like values that you like or, or just keep track of a few different. If you're working with the art director or something like ahead of time, you can find 20 that you like, show them quickly to, to them or the client or whatever and, and see what they think. Pretty cool. All right. So yeah, now I, I want to try to um, put some curves along this. So if you do scatter, these could be like the starts of the curves. Then I'm, I'm going to try to build a, a vector field. If you guys want to get caught up, this is the uh, current file that I'm working on. All right. So we'll just do this wrangle. And if we look at the normal. If you just type that in, it will kind of assign or, or make a, a normal attribute by default. Do we have a fur, <laughs> like fuzziness everywhere like that? Um, if you do cross product, this is like a quick way to get interesting looking um, flow. Like twisting or, or swirling or stuff like that. So this cross product of the up vector, or just zero, one, zero like that, you can see everything is now like spinning, um, spinning around itself or, or twisted like that. And then if you do a double cross product like this, this is kind of when things get really interesting. This is like you dumped a bucket of like cold water <laughs> on 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 him or whatever. So this is almost like hair. You don't even need to do a simulation or anything like that. And the hair is um, sagging kind of down like that or whatever. Cross product. Yeah, it's, it takes some time to wrap your head around or whatever. But um, it's basically like you give it. Two, two vectors and it gives you um, what's called like an orthogonal vector. Um, you can look up research or whatever, but you do like cross products, orthogonal is basically like the two vectors and then it gives you the third one that um, like intersects or is 90 degrees um, to both of those. You do the <laughs> thing <laughs> um but yeah the double double cross product is how you like just one and you can get swirls and then if you do two of them you can get this like aerodynamic thing so i'm going to switch this to happening on on the x direction one zero zero and now go negative Boom. So now this is like a fan is like blowing him uh, back almost. Or it's pretty interesting. So that's nice. Um, you can do, you might have to be a little bit careful. Like you can do angles as well. If you combine di directions. Um, you might want to do like a, a normalize. This will just make sure that the length stays at one. So 
like right now this will produce a vector or a direction that's that's longer or stronger than one but if you normalize it that will just make sure you don't get like too too much out of control <laughs> yes this is like the blow dryer effect so without this it's just pure fuzziness and then you you add that and it's like a thing that you've shot him with the hair dryer so that's pretty nice <laughs> um so yeah now if we scatter points after that you can see these inherit the directions but these are just a single line like it doesn't have any curvature or anything to it so it's a little still a little bit boring um so we can do our rasterize attributes you could do that or maybe even easier than that if you just do uh, bdb from polygons um instead of doing these up here if you do a surface attribute you could get the normal and then i'm just going to call this uh v or vel for velocity just do uh, a velocity type down here um so here we'll say build bell field from n so we're taking the the surface normal and using it to build a vector or like a flow field and again if you do the slice um this gives you a cross section and then if you do the volume trail This is a really nice way to visualize these flow fields or anything like that that, that you're building. The voxel size, if you reduce that, you'll start to get more, more detail. And again, instead of doing slice, you can just like streak these points directly, which is pretty cool. If you want um, to add like some some turbulence to this, if you do the the volume bop right here, you could add curl noise um, to the velocity. So, like we were saying earlier, instead of volume bindings. I, I just have a velocity field. So if I want to modify it, you can just do bind export. Bell. It's a vector. Um, usually I'll, I'll just start like this. And right now I'm just overwriting it. But you want to... Make a copy, just alt click uh, to, to duplicate. So here we read and write. And then if we just add, this is just adding turbulence to the velocity. I think this is a little bit too powerful. You can control it that way. You should do the simplex noise. You can get rid of this. Like this guy, if you're not going to use it, you can just delete it. You can feed the curl noise the SDF as well. I've tried that. I think for collisions, you can do some interesting things. I've never had really good success with it, though. Like, um... There's like the Bridson. Ridson. Robert... Robert Bridson. Um, they were able to get really good uh, results with it. Like, 
they were able to get all of these flows without any simulation with just curl noise and using the SDF. But I don't know in Houdini, I've never been able to get it to work that well. Um, but yeah, they, I don't know how... Uh, yeah, you could do that. I mean, there's a ton of extra options now, like with VDB. Um, you can even do the... Um, where did it go? Is it is it just called VDP flow? Project. So you can even do this and do like a pressure solve. And and that will um maybe have too many. Um if you like this is kind of like curl noise, is that it's trying to resolve um overlaps and stuff like that. So there's a ton of options, but I, I'm just going purely like abstract. This is kind of nice to have some of these uh, kind of like suctions or, or whirlwinds or whatever. But yeah, I've tried to use this SDF, but I've just never had very good success with it. All right, I'm going to try higher frequency of this. Turbulence. That's starting to look pretty interesting. Twenty-one thousand ninjas. <laughs> Sorry, I missed your message. Yeah, I'm. I'm um, kind of like building off of what we were doing last time. Is just making some abstract forms. Um, I'm starting to make this like skeleton or skull looking thing. Um, we can, do, there's also other uh, shapes I was playing around with. Maybe we'll try out a different one, like antlers or something. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to do this and then make it like a little bit furry. We can avoid body intersection. Um, it depends what your, what your, um, how you're like streaking this stuff. Sometimes you can do, um, reduce this CFL to get like more detail in these. Um, there's things you can do as well if you take the, the SDF and, uh, basically just use that to add like outward vectors to things. So do another VDB from polygons. And uh, you do an analysis, the gradient. <laughs> the gradient, um, Oof. What have I done here? Trail. Ah, sorry about that. I see. All right. So this gradient, um, by default, it points like in the direction that the the um, kind of like the surface normals are. So this is moving things away from the surface, if if that makes sense. Um, where did my trail go all right so if you have this and then if you add you can just do it with vdb combine you just add these 
together now you have basically any time it gets close to the the surface it will try to push it like back out so you can use this to to kind of make sure that things don't get uh when it tries to get inside of it it will push it back out <laughs> all right so you make even more this one if you want you can um turn off visualize if you don't want like colors or whatever um you want to start giving this thickness there's like a few different things you can try um if you do a sweep um and then just change this to ribbon <laughs> this is like a quick way to kind of uh make these things thicker Somehow these got air turned into arrows. Is this something's adjusting like the P scale or whatever of this? Um, you can also make a width attribute. Um, once you have width, if you go up to the object level up here, under misc, miscellaneous, shade open curves, then uh, the viewport will, will show these as like little ribbons. That's pretty nice. Uh, quick like hack to visualize things. All right. Let's maybe try this. Um, with the hair, hair generated. Before, before we do this, I'm going to take a quick break. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be right back in, in a minute. Um, I'll just disable this and I'll set this timeline to 12,000, 1,200, 1,240. <laughs> and uh, I'll set this to, to play. You guys can look at some different uh, iterations of that. All right, <laughs> what did I miss? <laughs> you guys were sh sharing all of the secrets. Okay, so I'll, I'll uh, go back to the frame we were on. Um, yeah, we're going to try to go with this hair generate. So we give this the surface um, that we want to grow hair on. In this case, I think we can do it. We with these attributes we could do it without them
we might need to convert the surface. Um, the reason to do that here, this is giving you a polygon soup. Um, the polygon soup is really efficient to, it's like optimized, um, but each of these faces aren't like fully unique. Like if I display the primitive numbers, every, every primitive here is named zero or it's number zero. But if you convert it, now you have a little bit um, more information about it. That uh, the, the hair gen basically it looks like it doesn't want to to run on a polygon suit. All right. So we we have a uh, regular fuzzy hairs. Um, I think you can do guide advet. So we give this our, our hair guides and skin. This is the skin and velocity. So this is our velocity. Look at that. It did it. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, These, these hair things are, are pretty nice. They work pretty well. Um, that's pretty cool. So I think under hair, we can see what else we have. Um, the frizz. Clump for sure is always pretty cool. The frizz, this is a, a, a useful one for sure. Um, this was just very random, but there's also like, if you want um, displays, should be just like a regular noise. Wave. It's a little too goofy. <laughs> I think this is just like a sine sine wave function. Um, let me see this. Thought we had just a regular noise, but maybe not. I think if you want to do a noise, if you make it into a velocity field, it will give you a better looking result. Um, but yeah, the frizz, I think, is nice just to add a little bit of of randomness to things. Like that. To just make it a little bit more natural. You can add, add some randomization in lengths, I believe. Um, I don't know where you would want to, to add it. Um, like here. You can override your length by by uh, attribute it looks like it's looking for this we do uh, just a, a wrangle or even easier maybe you can just do attribute noise um so we'll paste this it's gonna want this to be a float or just a a single value um I control middle mouse button, click that, or you can visualize the attribute. Um, I think these default settings are good, so we can put that in and see what happens. So yeah, if you want to vary it over, over um, the shape like that, let's add some more density. So yeah, you can get some different variation that way. The guide process. So yeah, I think this one, um, I'm just making a copy of it. Uh, under length. Multiply. Randomize. 
min max so yeah you can get some nice detail or, or variation in, in that as well look at that it's starting to uh look a little bit more more natural uh so yeah the the idea with the hair stuff is like these are your guides and then <laughs> the hair gel <laughs> once you are close to like what you want you could even simulate on these or whatever um once you know what you want then you want to do a another hair generate uh that would be like your high resolution um and then these ones you would give it the skin guides and i think that's all that you need so this is the skin it needs to be the same mesh uh and then these would be the guides you might you might be able to do it like this I don't know if that's... Guide. It wants the rest attribute. Let's put that in. Like that. Set it on fire. It's... A I don't know why it's still asking for the rest. Let me try, uh, put that in, put that in. Oof. <laughs> uh, all right. What is it? Uh oh. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I don't think we need that. Maybe. Uh, it's it was giving me a warning, so I'll just leave it like this. All right. So the idea with this high res, um, hair gen down here is that once you like tweak your noises, you can go really crazy with it, and then this is like interpolating or um kind of like filling in in the gaps or whatever between the, the other region. Um, so usually with the hair tools or grooms or whatever, people work this way. Um, if you if you really wanted to do specific combs and stuff like that, um, it, it runs easier on the... Uh, on the... Uh, guides for the, the lower like data set if, if that makes sense so any quick operations you want to do your sculpting or your, or your grooming um you can do it like that and then this like fills in or this would be like your render um render node if if that makes sense all right i'm gonna go in here and maybe add some more segments should give you some more detail i think even the, the length didn't make that longer start to get like some whiskers or something i don't know with this we're like losing some some detail maybe it's my length stuff is uh It should be inheriting all, all of those attributes. I might just not work that way. Let's just see if this is too slow. I think it should be okay to just work without guides and just make the full hair this way. What do you guys think? okay all right let's do uh another hair bump before before the frizz i think this clump size is too big 
this tries to give you, yeah, some, like, uh, fur that's sticking together, or hair, hair that's, uh, matted together or whatever. You can see it starts to, like, pull in some, some detail a little bit. You generating a curve you attribute? Zero to one. I I haven't anywhere. Um could use a Yeah, you can use that. It's it's pretty useful. Um if I if you do want the curve you attribute, I'll usually just do resample. If you turn off all this stuff, you can turn that on. Um like this. And then I think under width, or we can just do this in a wrangle, maybe. Um, it might, I don't know if it's already like built in, but if we do width equals per view. should exist okay so it's like these are going the other way i think we need to do one minus and then we have like spiky spiky boys <laughs> i said that yeah that's an option for sure i'm gonna leave this how it is for right now Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, um, if you want to do a transition or something like that, for sure, you can do the distance along geometry. Um, you probably even do some really interesting, like, magnetic kind of things, for sure. I think Simon, um, On his Instagram, or he's doing these magnetic things, yeah. Might be able to do something. So I feel like these magnetic, like, it's very similar to this clumping business. <laughs> right? Maybe without the frizz. start to get try something like that I don't know and you can use attributes <laughs> get get lost <laughs> but yeah the the distance along uh geometry for sure um and then like adjusting the length based off of that is is really cool to do um distance Usually I just do like zero. Whoops. The start point is zero. Um, we visualize it. This right here was probably point zero. Point number zero. Um, you might have to do some stuff like because of the connectivity issues. But yeah, you can transition things. Um, that way, which is really cool. We do. Color. Whoops. Equals. Time. Minus. Uh, dist. Get a grow. Whoosh. Let's clamp this at one. So we want the smaller number either between the result of, of this equation or, or one. And then this way it will no, no longer uh, get overexposed or whatever. And then um, 
we have this attribute that we were using the whole time for length. So initially we could, instead of color, let's just say the unguided length is, is equal to that. And plug that in. And then here, instead of, or I guess add, instead of add, you probably want to multiply. Uh-oh. The other, uh... Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Ooh. Yeah, I saw their, um... Hive presentation was was really cool when they were showing this. It, you could probably do a, do a similar thing here with that. <laughs> you need to clamp. These, uh, let me just try turning that off. Is it like negative numbers? I think it's negative numbers. Uh, that's kind of sloppy. Let me just switch this to a clamp function. Oof. <laughs> Oof. So I think these other uh, regions that weren't connected take a look at with the values that they're getting negative so if, if you wanted to like you can just get rid of them maybe anywhere that the distance is less than zero and then this is a point attribute okay we can probably add that one back in. Need to define roots. I think it would. Do you think it will work? Oof. This might be too slow to play over time. Let's, let's dial this back a little bit. Yeah, I think, so. I think it's working. Oh, you can do other attributes for sure. Like maybe you d you don't want them to be as uh, advected at the start. So like this blend, you might want to do that based off of an attribute as well. Pull them around. Color it like fire. Render it asus. Done. Yeah, well, I, I was interested in playing with the color. Um, for sure you can do black body ramp fire. Um, you can also do, a noise from the position. We want this to just be a float. The higher frequency. Do another <laughs> rasterize everything. <laughs> I might do. I feel like if you're coloring, depending on what you are saying, the hair is. I think you might want to color it on the skin directly, like the roots, and then grow it this inherit the color like if you had a leopard skin or something like that I want to subdivide this To 
compute curve view. Yeah, the, I was doing it with this resample. Just like this. You don't do any modification. This is uh, calculating curve view. Yeah, you can use it for color. There's tons of uh, interesting ways to do it for sure. So I was trying to do something, maybe. Do this. Animate. Imagine instead of your skull, you had a sweep. The hair gen should stick to it as long, yeah, as long as you're not changing the topology. Like if you're just expanding in inflating or deflating things with the sweep, it, it will stick. Um, you could even try it out if you use like this peak node, which is similar to what you would be doing with it. Um, oof. It didn't. Oof, <laughs> I think I've, I'm playing around with too many hairs right now. But yeah, you could play around with the, the, they're doing attribute interpolate. Um, it's under the hood. It should be smart enough to know about like um, the primitives and all of that, like. Uh, it's not using like world space positions. It's basically using the primitive number and uh, the the like parametric position on on the primitive. Let me try this. Uh oh. I'm I'm just gonna save this and reopen it. I think sometimes when you like escape out of things, sometimes you get some weird like errors or whatever. All right. Yeah, I think this peak node I was doing was was uh too too high of a value. <laughs> too much um so yeah if you were animating like the the width of a of a sweep it should be pretty similar to this i'm i'm getting some changes here because it's doing the guide effect and sampling different um areas of the velocity field so that's causing some changes oof it doesn't seem to stick here. I think you would just want to do this on the, the other input. Right. So it's just changing now because the surface normals are are uh, getting like blobbier or whatever. But if you were doing a just a tube with a, a width, it shouldn't... Um, as long as you do your static input into this one, you should be good. All right, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. So we were playing around with some colors. Um, I wanted to see what happens. I'm trying to make like some kind of leopard spots, maybe for this. We're just like black and white. Yeah, we had too many, <laughs> too many ideas. It's, it's got uh, like the magnetic stuff is a lot of uh, things to explore for sure. Let's just keep going with this. 
Maybe my uh, frequency is too high. This is starting to feel better. A hair series. I, I'm not... Uh, I need to do more learning on it. <laughs> I was kind of shoving these things together, but it's definitely... For sure, I mean, you can even do vellum with it, right? You do vellum configure hair. You do uh, the vellum. Everything's so so uh, quick to set up in Houdini now. You just get lost. <laughs> right. It's going to be too many hairs. <laughs> But you book me. <laughs> I'm trying to get back back into a better uh, schedule. All right. So yeah, this is pretty nice. I think my frizz is too much. Let's go with a lower frequency. Just trying to do it to like add some subtle detail. Maybe the random amplitude. It's pretty nice. The this velocity field here. I think it's too too low of a resolution. Length by curvature. That could be cool. L let me um I'm gonna try to add some detail to this velocity field. Don't need that. The reason to do this other wire here, this is just to have it match the the resolution. So I can control the resolution just on this one node. So changing that, I'm starting to get more more detail in the velocity. Um, the only thing you have to be careful about with this VDB method this way, when it builds your velocity field, it's just doing it on the surface or within a range of the surface. So if you want more more information propagated in, in your velocity field. Uh, you use these interior and exterior band. You have more areas where there, there is velocity information. You probably want to do the same thing down there. what happened. Did I lose it? Did I, did I switch swap this again? Hmm. <laughs> Where did it go? the hell is going on here? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so for some reason, the color is set to black. Um, but yeah, that's one thing to be careful about is just to make sure you have enough velocity information. Um, otherwise, it will like if it's too thin of, of information in there, you can have problems or whatever. So the curvature, length by curvature, yeah, I think that could be cool. I, I might try as well the um, color. But let's get the curvature and see what's happening with it. Just do it up here. It's 
one's pretty cool. Let's take a look. Rarely used Vex functions. I did get into some matrices and arrays and some of the rare stuff in, in the end of the pure Vex. If you go to YouTube, there's a playlist of it. But I, I agree that some of the PC find stuff for sure um, could use a, a nice, some t tutorials as well. All right, so we've done curvature, we blurred it. Um, let's turn it off. So f for the color here, let's add the curvature to it. I think it has some negative numbers in it as well. <laughs> you could color things based off of the... Uh, clump uh as well for sure i think i think um just coloring it based off of that could be a little bit too like low contrast or or um i don't know you know what i mean though like you already get some shading or shadow based off of um because the clumping like affects the shadows. I, I have something here that's... Something didn't... <laughs> didn't happen, right? I, I don't know. Ah, uh, well... Oh, so I'm, yeah, I'm already adding it just to one. Thank you for that. Look at that. All kinds of mistakes. <laughs> uh, I was planning to do redshift for this. I think redshift will be a little bit faster with uh, with the hair and the shadows and stuff. All right, maybe something like this. It's kind of sloppy. All right, let me get rid of... If you do like too much clumping, I think it makes it a little bit boring. It's like, it gets rid of some of the detail, maybe. So add in this uh, uh, length based off of curvature as well and see what happens.
Let's uh, check the difference. I think it will add some detail. Would be nice. Yeah, I was looking at these RSL, um, the OSL shaders. It, could, it would be, I need to learn more about the syntax, but it, it'd be cool to do like a stream or, or just a tutorial, uh, just going into OSL. I need to find that OCIO uh, transform snippet. All right, let's just organize this a little bit. Color. Length. Okay. We're growing like a hundred thousand pairs. We might not need that many segments. Two more, more hairs. You think the subdivisions? Let's take a look. Ooh, you're right. It's a little bit more interesting. Yeah, I think it looks a little bit more uh, stylized. Sometimes if you do too much smoothing and, and blurring, it uh, <laughs> decimates some of your detail. This is pretty nice. Just try to put some more detail in with the uh, pearl noise. All right. All right, this might be enough hairs and stuff to start uh, rendering. I think we can get rid of some of these extra attributes that we don't need. We don't need the curve mask or tightness. We just want position and width. You think you have something nice on frame 23? With the growth. Ah. Uh. Ooh. Yeah, this is like a, a nice little automatic haircut with the trimmers <laughs> I don't know it's a little bit uh I think it's nice to you know have some variation it makes just the composition like a little bit more uh you know a little bit more interesting it's like add some curiosity I think maybe like in the in the thirties somewhere, it could be. It's like kind of boring if everything is the same amount of uh, 
grown. Alright. So, these primitive attributes as well. I think we probably only need the color. So this, this will just make it a little bit quicker to render. Or it should make it a little bit quicker to render. Um, we want this to be the strands. I think we'll start with a low tessellation, just in case. Um, with Redshift as well, you do have to be careful that it wants everything to be P-scale. Because it's a, like a third-party plugin or whatever, and they they didn't take the time to uh, add a support for, for all the possibilities or whatever. So just name your curves P-scale, or the, the width the P-scale. You think color? Oh, I see what I did there. Thank you. Alright. We'll make our camera. We'll just start with a typical composition. We'll make our uh, redshift light. I think we're good. We'll make a materials. I don't know if they do this or the... Principled. We could try. We'll just try everything. <laughs> Alright, let's... Assign the material and start the render. Folks, <laughs> it's two and a half hours in and we're starting our first render. So it's like, it might be too many uh, pairs. We'll, we'll see. It's not, it's not too slow. <laughs> Tweak zone. So yeah, we'll do um for sure we want to do the bounce bounce lighting. It's a nice scattering, like indirect illumination and, and things like that. Um move the light around a little bit. Look at that. It's like the Donnie Darko mask or something. <laughs> Eight hour stream, six days a week. It's like the, uh, <laughs> the XQC hours or did you do a, a 14 hour Houdini stream <laughs> this is pretty interesting here let's just leave it like that for a second um, so yeah we're just doing the plastic material right now the default shader Ooh, I don't know what happened with that some of these I don't know if we need to uh... might need to re restart the uh, render 
you think the hair just wants strips? I think it should work like this. Let me try it. Just reboot. Sometimes when you like plug in different shaders while you're in the middle of a render, Redshift doesn't uh, like it. It can't load the shaders ahead of time. Like it, it can't uh, sw switch out the like response or whatever. I think I think that was the problem. So yeah, it's working a little bit. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. So yeah, I don't know if we're going for something abstract so you can like mix and match these, but I think the albedo like this is kind of meant to be like a natural fur. Some furry. <laughs> The spot. Ooh. <laughs> Let me see what's going on here. I don't know. Why is the spot? I, I think it's because of this, uh, like, angle shift stuff, right? Maybe the variation. I wish I could control just a little bit of the, uh, yeah, like the, the IOR maybe. Roughness. Ah, uh, I think this, yeah. So just a little bit of breakup with that spot could be nice um let's just see what it looks like with the dome i feel like i don't know if you really want the hair to look uh like very natural we'll just see what it looks like with the hdri after we Crash everything. Get the, the classic Barcelona. <laughs> Definitely get some um, better, like, shadow or fill or whatever. I don't know, is it just too, too dim? It's like super dark. You think they all on white? Sometimes I make a couple uh, HDRIs. Yeah, I had the I was I was playing around with the diffuse a little bit. Um, you definitely that was really making it. Yeah, I guess this is like specular highlights kind of, and then this is. Uh, This is more of like the fill. I think I'm getting out of control with my <laughs> my lights here. This is uh, the just the white one. Oof. Yeah, I don't know. I might leave it 
I might just do a spotlight grid light on, on black for right now. Um, let's do that. Let's put in a uh, ream. But once I add the point light, co the point color. All right, so we have another rim light. Could be nice. All right. Let's do that. Get rid of those domes. I'm just going to try the... Um, this one was like the principled. I'm using the principled. I think this one is, is good to use. can get our color I'm just gonna connect it like this like the music <laughs> yeah I, I, I need to uh, update it and keep but yeah it's a it's a nice relaxing uh, vibe I think my color the fat head <laughs> Yeah, I did that. I did some some. Uh, I messed around with my audio effects chain as well. I think it. Hopefully, it sounds a, a little bit more professional. Skill Mountain, Skill MTN. Thank you from Vienna. So I think with my color, that might need to be a uh, point attribute. Like it's possible that Redshift doesn't want it to be a uh, primitive. See if that works. Yeah, the the microphone. I think I tweaked it as well, where it it doesn't bring as much as the like <laughs> drinking sounds, or weird weird mouth sounds. Hopefully, tried to like filter that out. All right, so our color is working now. We can put it into uh, the color. Maybe this is just black and white, but we want to do like a ramp on it. We can do that. And uh, I don't know what maybe like we'll just see what happens with it some kind of uh warm and cold combination it might be too Too saturated. But it's also like not not in the um, diffuse, so it looks super desaturated. I think with this, the melanin stuff is also like hard to, can be hard to work with. Uh, the tint, I, I think that's, I've worked with these, um, it's possible I don't want to use the principal tear. I might try it like that and see what happens. And maybe I want to do like internal reflection on this as well. I think that these principled hair like is kind of intended just for super natural like looking hair colors with the, that melanin slider um like to make a natural like redhead or like a uh, brunette 
but as soon as you try to start doing like abstract I don't know that's something I've had happen to me before with the hair shaders so we get maybe just more <laughs> cartoonish <laughs> More abstract looking hair, I think, looks better with the uh, older or non principled model. This yellow is interesting. Ooh. <laughs> I think the yellow is working pretty well with the Asus. I, I think maybe. Ooh. Is somewhat uh, interesting. Maybe like the side. Yes, Taco. Thank you for the tier one. a little interesting I wish I knew a little bit uh, more about these <laughs> these hair shaders to really dial it in but uh, I think we can get hopefully we can get something pretty Pretty good. Oh my god, Steve GH. Thank you for the five tier two gift subs. Let's go. making it rain all right i don't know <laughs> there's a lot of detail happening inside of here Yeah, I don't know if the side view was like pretty interesting. I don't know. I'm kind of like, <laughs> I spent all the time building in the symmetry and then <laughs> I feel like I kind of need to, to leave it in a little bit to make it still pretty interesting. <laughs> So we'll do that. You can just try a different one. Like a completely different composition. Or just a different growth. You can see what it looks like fully uh, grown. That's one option. Um, yeah, that's one thing, um, I'm gonna play around with this pro noise a little bit. I think it was a little bit too high frequency. It was like too, too random. And then uh, we just go into like full screen. I'm gonna grab the 
symmetry tool. I'm going to apply that as well inside of here so that our turbulence has some symmetry in it as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's getting some some Donnie Darko vibes as well. <laughs> All right, so we have this. I'm going to try it. We have the other um bookmark we did up here from a different time offset just a whole new composition i might one thing i did do that was like get rid of the negative space let's just try we don't need that for right now Let's go up here and just see what else we get. We need to plug it in, of course. <laughs> you should see it. So this stuff wasn't cooking. <laughs> Something's missing. We are missing something. We have the color there. Color. Ah, uh, was I? Maybe a viewport. Say, uh, <laughs> viewport issue or something. I think. See what this Skadooks has a gun. So let's play around with the curl noise. I feel like the symmetry stuff isn't uh It's not showing up as much as I thought. This could be, could be interesting here. Let's see what we get. I think this triangle kind of uh, composition, hopefully it's, it's working a little bit better, but we'll see. Ooh. Yeah, this is a lot more uh, organic. Yeah, I think this one should work. What happened here? <laughs> we have some stray tuft of hair. <laughs> yeah, I think this is working pretty well. I might just play around with the color. Maybe the rim light. Bring it in to try to get some detail in there. But I think this this composition hopefully it should work. 
don't know if this it's like getting a little too uh wild with that pink See what's going on. It's tough picking colors. Yeah, I think this the color picker is uh I think it has the color trend like i haven't done too much to customize it but uh like it, it's applying the uh, the asus roll off try some emissive does this uh Does this support a missing? Yeah, I think it, it it is an ASUS. It does apply the transform, but it, I know what you mean. It is like a little bit misleading. But um, yeah, I think like I don't know how to uh, maybe I don't want to mess around with it too much. Um, but it definitely like just with the lighting and everything like that, it is definitely a little bit, uh, it throws you off. <laughs> yeah, you could do two, two different shaders. Um, I think we can actually though, I was going to try it this way, uh, incandescent. And I think if we just do the material blender. To put them in like this additive uh and then the incandescent let's just see if this works black black maybe Oof. <laughs> I don't know. Just leave it like that, maybe. Um, we'll see what happens. Is it going to work? Pretty simulation. The release using fall off yeah i've been meaning to watch paul's he put them up on side effects right or he did he also did a new x episode as well vellum notes highly recommended his um just the quick tips he's been doing on Instagram and Twitter and stuff have been just super inspiring to just get like quick ideas from and all that stuff. I don't know about it. Let me do some debugging here. This might have been too small of a uh, section. Like this should work. It does work. Maybe we want to do it randomly. I don't know. 
I think that this is like always going to be a little clumpy. Okay, so you probably just want to randomize this. Okay. So this should uh, split them out. <laughs> If random, yeah, you could do it that way. That's like percentage. I'm sometimes I do it this way. You could kind of like this because you can type in like, you know, you will have 155. All right, so I'm going to invert that. And then this one, whoop, this will be emit. And this will just be uh, the main ones. Uh oh. <laughs> Alright. I <laughs> shouldn't have. I just wanted an empty node. Okay. So I'm just going to use this to fetch the other uh, stuff. So we need two shaders. I think this, it might be a little bit easier just to tweak it this way. It's like I was being too lazy to set it up, but... Uh, I think this will work a little bit better. Let's make these more vibrant. All right. See what happens. Something disappeared. Uh, I think that uh, this one forgot to move it back to how it was. <laughs> I don't know the other ones. They aren't bright enough, maybe. Let's try this. I see some. I think I just need more. How many do we want? One, one thousand more. <laughs> Let's see what happens uh, with that many. 4,555. It's 
possible these hairs could be a little bit thinner. I don't know. There they are. Do you think this is going to be super, <laughs> super slow to? I wonder how much it's going, how much time it's going to take to get uh, the noise out of these. I think my uh, things are just getting a little too colorful. So I might pull back on the uh, saturation. It doesn't look like it's too bad. I don't know. To to resolve all that noise. <laughs> Four by five five. Yeah, I usually <laughs> I'm lazy and I just press the same number over and over again instead of like <laughs> adding zeros. One, two, three, yeah. I might be actually, it might be a little bit too many. Let me try a couple more things here. I'm gonna just go back to like half, a little less than half. And I think, try the hair a little bit thinner. Could save this again. If you guys want to get caught up, I haven't done a file share in a little bit. How do you know my secret? <laughs> the the worst is uh, when by mistake you type in the same random number. I feel like just from muscle memory that happens sometimes. Or I'll trying to generate like a random seed, and I'll do like six eight seven, and then I'll just type it in. <laughs> By mistake, the exact same number. Nothing changes, and it's like... It's frustrating. So I think it's a little bit nice having less uh, glowing ones. It's just a little bit more subtle. <laughs> Twice a day. Yeah, I, th I think it's starting to look pretty nice. I feel like it's, I'm almost seeing like a tongue. It's very much like a dog <laughs> or something right now. Let's switch this to the bucket. I think we need more uh, samples. Yeah, it's kind of like white hairs or gray hairs or whatever. Let's do... Uh... It's getting pretty slow. Oof. Look at that, though. It's pretty clean. I might have done too many. Try, uh... A little less samples. I'm just gonna go back. Do a little bit more, uh... Fancy stuff with the lights. So this main light, I think it's like a little bit too, it was too strong.
so it might be a little bit more interesting. You think these, uh... Like, to bury them? To, to move them closer to the surface or to push them? Like the whiskers, Ugh. electricity, they're the, the zapping him. <laughs> so yeah, I think we can do, uh, just make our group earlier. And do it up here, maybe. And, uh, we should be able to just do another process. Lift. Straighten. And just try it like this. I'm being super sloppy and <laughs> just naming everything group one. Boom. So yeah, you do this, like I think, um, follow skin, displace, or maybe lift, like an, uh, this one. This is like the opposite. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. You think we need a couple for this? So this one lift. It's like too, too long. Let's see what it looks like. Oops. I, I had my uh, display flag on the wrong thing. Oh no. Phase two, extraction. All right, just put it like that. See, see how it goes. I think it's a little bit more interesting to have them uh, straighten like that. Electroshock therapy. <laughs> All right. Then I don't know. I was trying to get this one light to hit like just a, a section of it, but I was having trouble. Uh, Dialing it in. All 
I feel like that makes it a little bit more uh could be cool. I don't know, this stuff is like still feeling too too saturated. I don't know if it's this uh these internal color stuff. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know. It's a little bit more, uh, I think it's a little bit more natural now. I think I was just like also a little bit over, uh, exposed in general. All right, I might do one more. Quick round of tweaks. So I'm gonna try just doing these like a little shorter, so they don't break the uh, silhouette too much. Steve, yeah, of course. Thank you for the uh, preamp recommendation and the gift subs. So let's, we'll just have these shorter, and uh, I'm going to try adding a little bit more clumping. I feel like we're not getting a, enough uh, clump, clumping vibes right now. Maybe it might need a little bit more frizz. I don't know. The, the only other thing is just like overall length. See what happens with a longer. Oof. <laughs> mm, could be nice. All right, let's give this a, a try. See how it goes. It's almost time for me to bounce. <laughs> I'm getting lost in the uh the tweak zone. Could be it. I think it's a little bit more interesting. It's like fluffy. 
This this thing here is a little bit nicer as well. But yeah, in this area is catching the light better. Yeah, I think that this could be it. Gonna save a new version. You guys want to to grab this one as well? Here it is, and uh, we'll get a, a bucket render going. If anyone has any questions, feel free to pop them in as we wind things down. Man, this redshift, it takes so long to uh, build these hairs. The only thing I know is to turn this tessellation subdivision down. That's like the only way I've been able to uh, speed it up. You definitely get really nice quality. Like with Mantra, I feel like it takes uh, 10, 10 or 20 times as long just to 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 get you like a somewhat reasonably uh sampled image we have this this kind of reminds me of uh what is that one movie the there's like the kind of magical like demonic creatures <laughs> that are existing in this like fractal world is it annihilation using the min hair width i don't think so i i didn't change anything on the um you think that's what's giving me some of the gnarly uh jagged edges there Vegan Nuts, thanks for, for stopping by. I, I don't know where the um, minimum hair width is. Ah, I see it. <laughs> Do you think this will help where it's like tapering off? I'm just going to leave this as a uh, progressive render. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's it's like uh, you need a ton of pixel samples. Otherwise, you just get really gnarly uh, anti-aliasing or whatever. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave this on the progressive render. Could take a, maybe an hour <laughs> if I if I leave it on the bucket style rendering or whatever. We got a, a, a gnarly little uh, mohawk. Just missed a, a spot shaving down here. But yeah, I think it's uh, Annihilation. I spelled it wrong, of course. <laughs> but yeah, there's like some weird uh, furry... Colorful things happening in here. It kind of re reminds me of this. It's like some... Colorful, like... <laughs> horrific looking uh skull or like a, a weird animal oh no <laughs> it's 
It's like the classic uh, mandel bulb. Is it based off of it or something? I guess that's the soundtrack. I didn't know they did uh, the CG. This looks like Billy's. Right? He does these really nice gold. Right? Isn't it a Billy's render? I think so. All right. If uh, I, did, I think this hair min width did did help a good amount up here. All right. If if nobody else has any questions, I will be signing off. Thanks everyone for uh, the advice, questions, steering me in the right direction. Don't get lost. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm trying to get back into a better schedule. Hopefully you get closer to, to a couple or three a week or something like that. But yeah, thanks everyone. Hope you enjoy your your weekend. The start of the summer for, for this hemisphere. <laughs> All right. Take it easy, guys.